Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In this video, we're going to try to answer the question whether InfraRiver Professional Edition is the best custom visual for Power BI that has ever existed. Now, if you don't have a lot of time and you're just trying to make a decision whether this visual is worth acquiring and worth incorporating into your design, I'm going to go ahead and save you some time. Yes, it is. It is truly a huge improvement and it uh, significantly more sophisticated than any other custom visual that is currently available in Power BI. And also it's leaps and bounds better than current technology that we have with matrix control or table control when it comes to being able to present data in rows and columns. At first, I wanted to do a detailed review and comparison of the product slash custom visual with the rest of the Power BI uh, native visuals or other custom visuals but it really doesn't make any sense to do a comparison like that. It's like comparing a bicycle to a Ferrari. You're looking at something that took years of man hours and years of engineering to bring together, something that's extremely sophisticated, has a lot and a lot of features. So instead of doing, uh, I will be doing some comparisons here and there. And also uh, in terms of doing a deep dive and doing a detailed review, it'll take me probably a couple of hours to go through all the features in detail and get you guys uh, walk through all of the amazing capabilities of this. And you know, you see me hesitating. I don't even know what to call it. It's not just a visual, a custom visual. I know in uh, Power BI blog, they released it, they announced it as a custom visual, but it's so much more. So if you see me stumble and kind of having to think twice about it, sometimes I'll call it a visual, sometimes I will call it a, a, a product, uh, sometimes I'll call it just Info River, but it's uh, it's it really feels like using this custom visual feels like you're using another product inside of Power BI, just due to such a rich set of features and capabilities that is available to us. So as I said before, I'm not gonna do a really deep dive here. Think of this vid uh, video as more of an introduction, where I'm gonna go through some of the key features that I really loved about the product and kind of introduce them to you so that you can start thinking about incorporating those things in, in your solutions. The most important thing that jumps out at you right away is that the product, uh, as soon as you place it on your canvas, has to come with its own ribbon. It has so many features that it really didn't make any sense to use the traditional properties pane that most of the custom visuals or Power BI visuals use, or use a ribbon. Unfortunately, Microsoft does not allow currently to incorporate custom ribbon elements in the uh, Power BI native ribbon, but I think that would be cool. That would save us quite a bit of real estate if we could move this area up. However, I totally understand why we have to have this feature because that feature in and of itself makes the product really shine. And when I talk about thousands of man hours that the product team had to put into developing of this visual, let me show you this, just attention to details, like little nitty gritty things that you know, that are there for you, no matter what you're trying to do. So take a look at basically the same data set that I just created using a native Power BI matrix. Every time I do a visual, I always have to worry about sizes of the presentation, right? So uh, when you're looking at this matrix control right now, you're probably having a hard time trying to figure out what the values are because by default, the font I think is 10 or something like this. So a lot of times when you're doing a presentation or I'm doing my videos, I have to go in and adjust it because some things are hard to see. And in order for me to adjust it, I have to adjust a bunch of things. I have to adjust the totals, I have to adjust the values, I have to adjust the rows, and I have to adjust the columns. So just to make this thing look like I can show it to you guys, takes me sometimes five minutes or so because I have to go and make all of those adjustments with respect to fonts, column lengths, and so forth. Let's see how easy it is to do with InfoRiver. All I have to do is hit Control key, and then just use my mouse to zoom in and zoom out, just like you would do in any other Windows product, right? So if I do a presentation, I need to drill in and zoom in on a on a report. I just I just uh, zoom in and uh, or I can zoom out. So even something as simple like this is available to us, and uh, and it's a it's a very very awesome feature and just one of the many features that the team have thought uh, about the product to make it as user friendly as possible. The other thing that I really really love about this is that it takes us to having a an Excel-like table in Power BI. In fact, I could really argue that the capabilities of what the product offers in Power BI within Power BI actually is far greater than 
what we can do in Excel. So if you're currently finding yourself doing your financial statements, income statements, sales reporting, another type of reporting in Excel, because of you need really need that flexibility of, of Excel where you have cell level editing capabilities and formatting capabilities, I think you really should take a look at this product because I think you'll have a hard time finding a feature that Excel has that this product does not have. In fact, I think this product will have a lot more capabilities than Excel does today. So what are the, some of the awesome things that I love about this product? Number one is I have really great control over the pixel perfect control over the layout of the table. I can go into the setup and change, for example, the uh, to the pixel level, the width of every column. So if you click on manage columns and click to advanced, here I see all of the columns and I can see the width and I could go ahead and make it whatever at the pixel level, I can make it, uh, make that adjustment and, for, and get that level of formatting. Another feature that's available to me is ability to specify the row height. So here I went into the display options general and I have so many different options for formatting such as default width, padding and my favorite row height. I can do alternated rows. So just just a ton of different formatting options. And obviously it's much easier for me to uh, make these changes than doing a similar modifications for the native Power BI uh, controls because I have a lot more real estate to, to make these changes to my visual. Another problem that we're commonly facing with Power BI reports is printability, if that is such a word. InForever is really friendly to be able to, to generate pixel perfect reports that are aware of pagination. So uh, in my case, what I've created is uh, a matrix where or a table where you could drill down by distribution channel into specific brands. And I could take a look at my revenues and do year over year comparisons. So if I were to create a customer invoice or any kind of other report, and I want this to print one page per individual category, in Power BI it would virtually be impossible, or I think it's impossible unless you have to use a report builder. Here, all I need to do is I go to advanced and I could go to breaks and I could specify that insert a page break by distribution channel. And now I could paginate through different pages and you will see that we have a dedicated page for every segment. Now I can drill in and take a look at individual brands. And this is where we have another one of my favorite features. So in a lot of cases you have, you really only want to care about top end contribution. So if I go ahead and filter, um, filter my uh, stuff by brand, by revenue rather, then now I can change this report and go to home and say top N. So I just want to see, for example, top seven brands by, by value. So if I click apply, then you will see my top seven products or brands. And then the rest of them are going to be bundled into this other. This other is works, works dynamic. So however many uh, more than seven do I have, all of those will go into this other. This dynamic grouping is obviously very useful for us. Uh, right away, you will notice like really the attention to details from the development team. I can't give them enough kudos for this. You will see that as long as soon as I make any kind of changes, so you see that I've created some conditional formatting here, I'm using top end feature. So you will see that those options that are being used, you will see an indicator there telling me that there is one conditional formatting rule that's already been applied and I could click and manage those rules that top end feature has been applied. So the color has changed. So the team has done everything for me to remember what I've done, what I've changed. They've done everything they could to make it as user friendly as possible. The other thing I was going to talk about is ability to introduce local level variables and measures and kind of do local level adjustments. So some of the things that we can do is a lot of times when you do an income statement, you will want to break it down into three categories. You'll have month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and you want to have an, a space in between all of those groups. How would we do it in Power BI? I would have to create some sort of measure. I would have, find, have to way, find a way to insert um, in here so that I could kind of have the, the pseudo quasi column so I could create that separation. So here, if I want to create a new column, all I need to do is I go to advanced, insert column, and I just need to specify, I can give it no title uh, or any title and just specify a space as a formula, click create. And then all I had to do was to move it in between my two areas where I have two different seg uh, segments here, consumer and professional. I can adjust the width 
And by the way, there's another cool thing here where I could click on this icon here, Rails, and that gives me Excel-like ability to adjust, make adjustment to the look and feel. So if you live in Excel, then you're gonna find a lot of things that you're familiar with and that you love with baked in right into a product. I can do uh, an adjustment for my header, just delete it if I don't want it. And, um, and there you go, now I have these two areas. I have a consumer area, I have a professional area, so they're nicely separated. I can figure out how wide the gap should be. And I did not have to create like a silly placeholder variable in my model, cluttering my, my measures. Uh, and a lot of you guys already have hundreds of measures there already. So every time I have to build report specific or visual specific variables, it, uh, measures rather, it just uh, clutters our design, makes a, you know makes the list of measures even longer. So here, if I wanted to do something that's visual specific, there is no point to do anything at a model level. I could just do it right here. Just as easily as I've added a column here, you can add a new row. And when I do my more detailed follow-up on this visual, I will get into more details on how to do that. As I said before, I wanna keep this first video sweet and short, uh, hopefully below uh, under 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna rattle off a couple of other things that I think are absolutely amazing. One of the things you could do here is work with the footer and header. So as you can see, you can, uh, you can insert, if you click on a footer option, you can insert page numbers, you can insert dates, um, you can figure out the layouts. Uh, do you wanna have how many areas you would like in your footer and, the, and, a, and, a, and a header? Here, what I have in my header, I've specified the, the title of the report. Um, I specify this header to have two options. And in a second portion of the, of the header, I actually um, uploaded the, the logo. And that's pretty cool because as this report prints, prints then I will have that header on every page. I don't believe you could do this um, in any standard Power BI or, or visuals outside of the report builder. Another thing that uh, I absolutely love about this product is the ability to create notes. So I could click on a cell that, um, that I would like to add note to, click on notes and say add new note. And then here I could say way to go and assign a color to it. All right, so now you could see that there is a note associated to it and then if I mouse over, it says way to go. Now I talked about ability to create local variables. I'm a Power BI, which you would say a power user. I, I, uh, it's very easy for me to create measures as necessary. A lot of people have uh, struggled with uh, creating DEX calculations. Therefore, you could create new measures right here in the report. So here I create a revenue variance calculation that divides create calculates the variance and divides it by revenue last year. So I do have in my model, obviously, a measure that does it, but if I didn't, I could have created one on the fly here. So the product has very rich capability to create local measures that are local to this, this report here. I just noticed that this video is already almost 15 minutes lo long and I have not even scratched the uh, the, the set of features that are available to us. Let me try to wrap this one up and start uh, uh, thinking about the more detailed deep dive for this uh, and I think it's not going to be able I, I'm not going to be able to do it in just one more video I think it's going to be a series of things that I will just be highlighting uh, maybe five and ten to ten minute increments to highlight some other amazing features in this report but just to summarize I believe that this is um, probably a um, the most important uh, visual that has come on a custom Power BI scene visual scene uh, for a while, if not ever, uh, just due to how rich it is in terms of features, in terms of capabilities. When we work with custom visuals, typically they're barely meeting my expectations. And I uh, typically, I'm not a big fan of custom visuals because they're just not as user-friendly, not as powerful, not as useful to me to make it worth, worth my while to engage into procurement process, dealing with negotiations, acquiring, you know, purchasing all of that stuff. So I just make it do with usually the native Power BI visuals. This is one of the first time, if not the first time when the visual came to my attention that is so powerful, that's so uh, useful, that is so user-friendly that um, it really blew my mind. The, so the amount of features that are available to us, um, you really can't compare it to anything else available. So uh, in the area where it serves, obviously we cannot do a, a bar chart with this, Although this is a professional edition, who knows what the other editions of the product will uh, will allow us to, to do. But uh, for when it comes to just building tabular type of reports, financial statements, and other things, really your choice before was Excel. 
and uh, maybe some kind of hacky way to do it in Power BI. Now we could finally have a product that does everything Excel does, but better, and does a lot of other things that you cannot even do in Excel. So in my mind, um, anybody who's asking if this product is, uh, is worth investigating, you know, worth uh, looking at, in my mind, the answer is enthusiastic yes. So sorry if this video turned out to be a little bit longer than I was hoping it would be. Again, this is just uh, a part one in probably a three, four part series just because of how feature-rich this product is. Hope it was useful and I'm looking forward for you to come back and check out some other visuals uh, videos available on our channel. Thanks, bye.